From my habit you'll know I'm a Dominican, and so have a special place in my heart for the boys of Blackfriars, especially those soon to emerge from the school to lead and serve our world. I'm not the first Archbishop in Australia to wear the habit of the Blackfriars. The first was Robert William Spence, the third Archbishop of your city. A zealous and forceful preacher, he was sent in 1898 to establish the first Dominican house and church in Australia, St Lawrence's, North Adelaide. While serving as prior, the then Archbishop John O'Reilly came increasingly to depend upon him and petitioned for Spence to be appointed as his coadjutor or assistant and successor Archbishop. Despite some Australian bishops objecting to a religious becoming bishop, Spence was appointed just as World War I began and became Archbishop the following year when O'Reilly died continuing in that role for two decades to 1934. As Archbishop, he did much to build up and renew the church and city of Adelaide. Interestingly, he continued to wear the simple habit of the Blackfriars, rather than the purple of an Archbishop. The boys and men of Blackfriars Priory School should understand what that means. The black in Blackfriars refers to the kappa, or action hero's cape of the Dominicans. The friars refers to those part monks, part actives, who contemplated at home and then shared the fruits of that contemplation with the people of their city. The black and white they wore was symbolic of the truth they thereby tried to share with others in their preaching and lifestyle. This coming year, it will be the 800th since St Dominic's Blackfriars were approved as an order within the church. You are part of that eight centuries old family. As you complete your studies and exams and go out to engage in further study, work and leisure, to become friends, husbands, fathers, priests, religious, whatever it is that you will do next and ultimately do, the black and white charges you with the responsibility of giving a lead in our world precisely by speaking and living the truth. As a leader in the church in Australia, I have to be a servant of the servants of God. Like Jesus, like our Holy Father Pope Francis, never lording it over others, but rather sharing the healing and inspiring truth with them teaching, preaching, inviting people into friendship with God. Whatever you end up doing with your life, make it your habit to offer the world encouraging words and saving truths. You know there is so much more to life than just accumulating wealth, power and pleasurable experiences. The all-knowing God gives men like yourselves the gifts and opportunities to raise yourselves and others to higher truths and a deeper, more abiding happiness. Have courage. Love God and humanity and our world. Speak the truth in love. God bless you in the years ahead.